Home Learning Art with Mrs Smith. Hello and welcome back to Mrs Smith's At Home Art Class. In my last video, we did a lot of learning about the element of art, colour. This week, we're going to be applying all that new learning to create an amazing piece of art. First, let me introduce you to a New York based um, artist. His name is Dean Russo. Check him out. Dean Russo is a New York artist who loves animals just as much as he loves art. He uses bold colours and abstract patterns to create these vibrant artworks. Dean Russo is our inspiration for our artwork today. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you need to do is jump online and have a search for an animal outline. It can be any animal you wish. Maybe you're doing a study on animals at school for an information report or something like that might be a good idea to pick that animal but it's up to you so once you've chosen your animal and it is in black and white it cannot have any color on it you need to copy and paste that image into a brand new doc once it's there make sure it's nice and big you need to enlarge that image to fill your page once you've done that print it out okay the next step is to work out which medium you're going to use to add color to that picture Medium is the materials you use to create an artwork. If you're using more than one medium, we call it mixed media. So media is the plural of medium. Now I've had a little bit of a play with this and I can see that all the mediums are absolutely fine for this activity. So just choose or find something that you have at home to complete this. It might be a mixed media piece. Maybe you're using a combination of materials. So have a look at the results and see what you think. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few samples of um, artworks that I've done at home, just to show you how the different mediums may turn out. Now, this is a tiger that I printed off my computer. He really appealed to me because I really liked all the lines through it and made it a really interesting piece. To complete this um, particular artwork, I've used watercolour paints. This is the watercolour paint set that I use at home. It's a Mickey Doll brand. It's really good. You can see that it has lots of different colours, but you can use any watercolour paints for this project and it will be absolutely fine. Okay, now the first thing I did was think about the analogous colours and I painted the base of the tiger using analogous colours in each section. So for example, if you look through here, I've started with a dark blue and then gradually got lighter. And then it goes into green because green's next to the blue. And then up through here, on the other side of blue, we have purple. So that's another analogous colour. And then coming down here through purple, it turns into pink and so forth. Um, if you look at the tiger's nose, it's also analogous colours to the base. I started with a light yellow and gradually got darker and darker using these and blending these analogous colours. Once that whole tiger was completely covered in paint, the next step was to think about contrasting colours because we're going to use contrasting colours over the top um, using patterns and lines. Remember from our last video, contrasting colours sit opposite on the colour wheel. So an example would be, look at the nose again, orange for the base, and so the line on top is blue because that's the contrasting colour. Over here, you can see the orange and blue again. And I think that little area there looks really beautiful. It's really contrasting. Um, the ears, so the base was green, the contrasting colour on top is pink. And it's the opposite on this side, pink with the green line. So if you choose watercolour paints, that's how it may turn out. The next one I'm going to show you is a toucan bird. Now to complete this one, I've used oil pastel crayon. Again, this was a Mikador brand, but any crayons will be fine. And just like the tiger, using analogous colours to do the base of the toucan and then a contrasting pattern um, or line over the top. Okay, and the third and final artwork I'm going to show you is this groovy kangaroo. What do you think I might have used? What medium do you think I might have used for this kangaroo? 
you said Dexter, you'd be right. So I've used these water-based um, Crayola textures. Again, you know, I've used Crayola, but you can use any brand you like. As long as they're water-based, um, this trick should work. I'm going to show you how you can turn Dexter into um, a painted look. So what you do, colour in a little bit, and then put in my water. And if you just get water on your brush, you can see that the ink from the texture starts to spread. And that's how I did this kangaroo. You can see the outline there and then the water effect in the middle. Now the other way that you can turn texture into a painted look is by grabbing some foil and just blue this time. And you can just do a bit of scribbling on the foil. Grab your paintbrush and some water again. And that makes paint out of texture. So you could use that as well if you wanted a painted effect. All right, so there's the three samples. Now, okay, just to demonstrate how to complete your artwork, um, I'm going to add color to this beautiful zebra. The medium I'm going to use is these soft pastels, or sometimes people call them chalk pastels. They're a beautiful medium, quite messy to use, but the colors are super vibrant and beautiful. Now, this might be a medium that you've never used before, or maybe you've only used it a few times, but uh, let's see how chalk pastel turns out. Okay, so the first step, like I mentioned earlier, was to um, pick about analogous colours and you should always refer back to your colour wheel. Have your colour wheel sitting there handy to look at. And each section needs to be a blend of analogous colours. Okay, so I've done some yellows there. I might jump over to, I don't know, blue. Do some blue analogous. Let's see if you can see them. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to continue that, but I'll speed it up a little bit for you. So I've just completed the base for my zebra using those analogous colours. The next step is to add patterns and lines using contrasting colours. And it is a really good idea to have your colour wheel handy. So you can always refer back to it and see exactly what the contrasting colours are. I've started here, I've done purple on top of the yellow because purple is the contrasting colour for yellow. Now I'm move on to the blue, contrasting colour for blue. Use orange. So I'll find an orange amongst here. And I'll draw a different line, I'm going to use a zag. And we've got green coming up. So contrasting colour for green is red if it's a dark green or pink if it's a light green. So for dark green, red. And I'll do a wavy line. 
Now I've come up to yellow, contrasting colour for yellow is purple, so I'm going to switch to purple there. That continue on my wavy line. Orange contrasting colour is blue. Okay. Enjoy watching. So that's my zebra all finished now. Um, the contrasting colours sitting on top of the analogous colours really look fantastic. I look forward to seeing all of your artworks. Um, please post them so I can check them out. See you later. Bye.